All right, guys, uh, you guys are free to holler anytime you want. Uh, as a reminder, this was just me opening up Visual 20. I think I have 2022 installed. I do. It may have been a while since you've done uh, any programming. If you were in CSCI 1 and didn't do anything over the summer, you might, this would be a little refresher. So open it up. We're going to start a new program our new project. We want to create empty ones. And this is how, where I want to have it saved. Uh, day one lecture. It will go with 01. And it's creating. Okay, uh, I have my stuff on dark mode. Just control plus and large, no it doesn't. All right, so I'm gonna right click on source files, do add, add a new, new item. I'm just making a C++ file. Source CPP is a fine name for now. And let me go like hijack some stuff from the browser. Get that chat bar from Zoom out of the way. Get the Zoom camera out of the way. There we go. Come into our class. I'm going to grab it, delete most of it, but see what I want to talk about today. When we're done, I will uh, upload the code we did as an announcement. Dashboard? Yeah, let's do dashboard. Seaside. Okay. Come on. Grab that function in a second. We'll go, that's a little easier to do live. We'll start with that. All right, so we're starting out. We got a new project. I copied some stuff over to make it a little bit faster. We always want to include our IO stream. And using namespace STD is always pretty nice. It makes grabbing stuff for the standard library a lot quicker. Uh, instead of having to do STD colon colon C out, we just get to do C out now. Uh, and so here, 
as some refreshers we're here we're initially initializing a variable uh, another way of doing this uh, recall the double forward slash is doing commenting you can also do this by doing int x and, do, and then doing parentheses five that's another way of initializing x to five and then something that i think we touched on very briefly in csi1 when i taught it was pointers so let me go over to the document camera real quick and describe what what's going on with pointers So what I've done with int x equals five. Why is that? There we go. Int x equals five. What's that that's doing is going into memory and it's naming a, a, a memory space, allocating memory space. And in that memory space, it's storing an integer five. So this is our memory space. And the next line you can see is, says this, I'll do this in a different color. It says int star xptr equals the ampersand and then x. What this is doing is it's making a pointer to a memory space that contains an integer. Allocation that has an integer. That's what int x5 is, or I'm sorry, int star. That's what it's doing right there. So we, when we do that in pictorially, what we do is we draw an arrow. So this is xptr. xptr is pointing there. And it says equals ampersand x. Ampersand X is the address in memory where X is stored. So XPTR or X pointer, this stores addresses. And that's true in general. Pointers store addresses. So we don't really, that's not really what we want to use in, in, in programming. So the way we get what we want out of it is we don't want the address. We want the contents at the address. Is my Zoom... All the way out. Yep. At the address. And so the way we get that is we do something called dereferencing. That is what C out. Axtric XPTR is doing. This will yield the contents of 
in the address of X pointer. So let's take a look at it. We'll run it, take a look at it, and look at each line code or what the output is line by line. Maybe I need to defrag my Surface Pro or something. This is ridiculously slow. Okay, so the first C out X, do this. The first C out X right here, line 13, is giving us that five. And then when we do the ampersand X, that is giving the address where that is stored. And it's in hexadecimals. So addresses are stored as hexadecimals. So it gives us that. And then notice when I did XPTR, I had stored it as ampersand X and it's also showing me that content here. When I dereference it with the pointer or with the asterisk in front, it yields the content at that location. There's more than one way to do these pointers. So another way is uh, you'll see this in some codes. They'll do int. Then they'll put the asterisk before XPTR equals ampersand X. I'm not a big fan of it because to me, the asterisk in front means dereferencing. And so like this, after having an app to the int, that makes me think like the integer is pointing at something. Uh, that's the way I remember it. Another way that they do it, some websites will have it like this. They'll have a space between it, the asterisk, and then a space between like that. You'll see a couple ways of doing it. I prefer this way. Uh, depending on how you do it, whatever way you like to do it yourself. We could just as easily say int y. Int pointer y equals ampersand x. Now, this is an ideal. Because looking at y, at the name of y, doesn't make it clear. It's a pointer for x, a pointer to x. So a good way of doing it is taking the name and just adding PTR to it. OK, so not a big fan of that. I'm going to comment that out. Uh, also, hexadecimal addresses kind of suck. Uh, so something we can do that makes it like, we do numbers sequen sequentially, so you might find it easier to cast the addresses as an integer. So we do see how an in integer of the address of x, or see out the integer cast of xptr. I guess I gotta close it. Is it being moody?
So the integer address is 586151396. So that's what pointers do. Pointers store addresses, okay? Uh, this is kind of handy. The reason why we like pointers over actual values is sometimes we're, we've got arrays uh, and things like that, and an array can take up a lot of memory. And so, like, if we transfer an array to a function, that sum of bitch soaks up a lot of memory space. A lot. Because you know, we have to copy it when we're transferring over. If we do a pointer, all we're doing is sending the address of the initial array, which is pretty handy. Uh, so, like, let's add some more to this. So, we can make a character array. And I had my name in there. Uh, as a reminder, how many or what size is A here? Array A here. Anyone remember a re character array sizes? Anybody? Uh, it's zero, one, two, three, four. Close. So zero, one, two, three, four, that would be five, right? Yeah. Uh, but, uh, so the array size for characters is the number of characters plus one. Oh, yeah. I was doing vector then. It has the null, the null, uh, null terminated. So that adds an extra one. So this has got six six parts to it. So I could say int size six, size equals six. And if I want to see, uh, we could do a little for loop, a quick reminder of for loops. I equals zero, I less than size, I plus plus. And I could just say C out uh, A bracket I, that'll go through each element of the array A one at a time. And after I'm done, I'll just throw in another end line. Maybe two end lines. Take a look at it real quick. Just make sure that's printing out the way I want it. It should show my name. And it does. It shows my name, David. Okay, so uh, what happens if I do a pointer to this stuff? Uh, oh shit, it's been a while. There was a way to highlight everything and comment it out. So here. That didn't do it. All right, one way of doing it is like this. That's one way of commenting on a block of text. There's a shortcut thing for Visual Studios. I forget what it is. I'm going to have to look it up. Uh, that's just so it has less clutter on the screen. What is this M? Let's take a look at what an pointer would do for this. So I'm going to say char 
asterisk sign for a pointer, and then we'll call it APTR, all right? And we're going to say that equals, equals a, and we'll send it to the first element of the array. And we'll take a look at what that is. Uh, C out A. We'll take a look at C out A bracket zero. And we'll take a look at C out A pointer. I remember how to do a block of text. I remember. That is not what it's supposed to do. Oh, yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Uh, so when we see out A, it's showing us uh, an A pointer. It's pointing us to the square, but it's showing out the content. So all of these showed the content starting at a bracket zero, which is weird because here I just said see out the address of a zero, and it gave me the content. Right, seems a little funny. What happens if I see out A1? If I change that to A1. Let's take a look at what happens. So it's did the rest of my name but skipped A0, which was the first D in David. So that's how that works. If we want an address for pointers on an arrays, we have to cast it as an integer. So let's take a look at that. And what happens if I do C out integer of A? We all throw in another end line right here. Int, casting the address for a pointer and casting the address for a both yield the same integer result. Okay. Let me go back to the board real quick. The red is a white erase. I guess I could just put that on the side and write on a piece of paper. Let's do that. So I have this 
My name stored in memory space. We got D A V I D and then null terminated. This is A zero, A one, A two, A three, A four, and then A five. The letter A, when I cast A as an integer, it showed that it's an address. The letter A, the name of the array is just, a, is a, it's the address of the, the first character. It starts with the first character. Well, we had a pointer doing the same thing. These both yield the same thing. A and A pointer are pointers to the address of the first element. First character in this case. So we could, what can we do with this? Let's see, what do I want to do? Let's uh, if we do a for loop. I could uh, see out. Let's look. Let's take a look at how the the memory is working on that. We're going to see out the address of a bracket i. And then maybe take a look at doing a c out of the pointer. Actually, let's do that first, and I'll show you how to get the equivalent using pointers. The thread is exited. Let's try it again. There we go. So other than the first couple were repeats, uh, it's going 236, 237, 238, 239, 240, 241. So this was a bunch of numbers and then it ended in 236. Where are we on? This had 237, 238, 239, 240, 241. The integers, these are in bytes. So it turns out characters are one byte. And one byte is eight bits. How do we get the same thing using pointers? Let's comment out that as well. Do a for loop and i equals zero. I less than size. 
Oops. I must have caps lock on. Oh my gosh, I keep hitting caps lock. Size. I++. plus plus. I'm going to see out. I need to dereference the A, the A pointer. And we're going to do what's called pointer arithmetic. Oops. That should be on that. And I'm missing that. There we go. All right. See how that this is dereferencing. the contents of a pointer to start with, then a pointer plus one, a pointer plus two, and so on. Let's take a look and see what it does. How does pointer arithmetic work? So it printed out the characters D-A-B-I-D. If I just do it without the dereferencing, let's copy that. Let's get rid of the dereferencing first. Just C out A pointer plus I. Maybe I'll throw in a little extra character in between it or extra line return. So just doing a pointer plus i is going through the cells in the array one at a time, just like uh, oh wait, no, it didn't. What did it do? Ooh. Oh wait, yeah, the, my bad. I already said A pointers, when you do it, when you see on an A pointer, it gives you the contents. If we wanted the address, I got to do that. That's what I wanted. My bad. I didn't need a carriage return between them, so let's do that. That looked tacky. Hard to read. It's all about readability on the screen. So both methods are producing using doing yeah either doing integer with the address AI or a pointer plus I. So doing the pointer arithmetic is like iterating through the array. That's kind of neat. It's going through the array. If we want to actually get the contents of it without printing out everything. Notice if I have this without the integer. Now that I have the N line in there, it'll look okay. It was probably just a second ago. So just doing C out of A pointer, A, A pointer with I equals zero is just giving me the David. And then we do A pointer plus one, it's sending me to the A array that starts at A1. 
and it's printing out the contents of the array starting at A1. And then when I is two, it's going to the contents of A2. And so that's giving me everything that follows. If I just want one character at a time, I have to dereference. I have dereferencing listed everywhere. This shows the address. There we go. This shows the address of each cell in the array. It just shows the contents of the array starting at the ith element. And this is actually dereferencing the contents of the array starting at the first cell and going on. So this one actually types out the name one character at a time. OK, uh, so it's worth noting for really big arrays, using pointers can uh, be a hell of a lot more efficient. You're only sending one address. not a whole array of data. Does that make sense? So the pointer part is putting an at doing an asterisk after you declare what the data type is. Then you give the name of the pointer. And the pointer is an arrow. That's why it's called a pointer. It's pointing to the address of where the array starts. As we have there. Uh, and for arrays, this is all sequential fixed memory. Let me see how I rotate there. There we go. Sequential fixed memory. Allocated when compiled. Where we are going in this semester is doing linked lists. You'll see linked lists eventually. And when we do that, we'll have D in one box, and then A can be in another spot, and then B, and then I, and then D, and then the null terminal. So that's link, link list. These are non-sequential memory. It's pretty handy. Uh, strings are like this. Strings, I believe, are like link lists. Vectors, surprisingly, which we'll look at in a second, vectors are more like arrays, which is weird because arrays can grow at runtime. I'm sorry, vectors grow at runtime. Arrays cannot. That's why we have to have a fixed size. 
the way the system does deals with this for vectors it pre-allocates a lot of extra memory for vectors to compensate for growth at runtime Okay, so we could probably make this look a little bit cleaner by, let's see if you guys want that up a little bit longer. Give you guys a second while I take a drink of water. Uh, we could have cleaned this up a little bit better uh, since this was our address. And this was our character. We could have said something like this. The address stores and then included. And I will comment out the rest of this. And so now I'm doing the integer version of the pointers gives us an address. And then we dereference it's called dereferencing to get the contents at that point of that cell. So this should tell us the integer address of where the memory is stored and then tell us what it's storing. The fuck? Okay, it's being all moody. Let's try that again. There we go. And notice it's telling us the last one is storing null terminal. Interesting, it's showing the memory as negative. That's fun. Okay. Uh, so that stuff's all kind of like something the equivalent is in here. We did this part live with the pointer primer. Uh, let's take a look at the function, uh, reviewing functions real quick. And let's just run it and see what it's doing. All right, so as we look at it, so it starts off initializing x to store an integer 5. And then we make a pointer, x pointer, to that box. So we've got a pointer to x, and then we've got x. And then we've got three functions here. We've got square fun 1, which is just passing the integer. And what it's doing is it looks like it's squaring it. It takes in the integer, multiplies it by itself. It shows this. This is here to show that it hasn't updated x, which was what was passed. OK. So square function 1, x after the function call. So we did the, the square, let's do, do that. All 
Okay, so this line right here, it's doing the function call. It's sending in x equals five. It's squaring it and it's returning the square, the 25. So it does that. And then the next line right here, uh, what line is that? Why do I not have, there we go. Now I can see the lines of code. Uh, line 17 says X after the function call, and it shows that X hasn't changed. It's still five. Then square fun two comes along. What does square fun do to do? It's passing an integer by reference. So we put a, an address sign after it. And we'll go look at it in a second. What it's done is it's it's spit it out 25. So it did square it. But now it's saying X after the function call is 10. It has changed the value of X. So let's go look at square fun two. Here we are passing by reference. So the original value can be changed. Okay. This line right here is where X was changed to the value 10. Okay. It is kind of nice because when we, when we do the call, notice all we had to do was stick in X. So nothing, not a whole lot changed. All we had to do is instead of saying pass an integer, say we're, we put the ampersand at the end and we say we're passing it by reference. And now it has access to X. It's actually looking at X, not a copy. On this one right here, pass is a copy of X. Here, pass is X. So when pass changed, X changed. And then square fun three is passing a pointer. It's passing a pointer to the location of X. So we can see right here, we had to send it a pointer, XPTR. But then to use it, we had to dereference it each time. So you got to dereference to multiply it when you pass by pointer. That's just something you're going to have to remember. Uh, you'll see when you run it a lot that your answers aren't looking the way you want it to. Here is saying, let's set, set the dereferenced X pointer to equal to 20. And we come over here and we look at it and it actually updated it to 20. So at this point right here, X was 10, it squared it, gave us 100. That's this line right here, 45. Line 46, it, it changed X to equal 20. So there's three ways to pass it. This is passing. Reference using pointer values. Using pointers. Okay. It is editing the original. Both of these edit the original. That's quite a lot to, to process. Uh, this one's worth looking over a couple times until you've got it locked in. Uh, we can pass by reference using the ampersand, or we can pass by pointer using the asterisk. If we pass by ampersand, we still get to send the, the original name of the variable. We don't need a pointer. The, the price of this... Now, what, it, what is it doing? It's passing, passing the reference using reference arguments, but... If there's a lot going on, it just might be a pain in the butt. It risks, it risks, it allows you to edit the original contents, which is fine if that's what you want to do. So just keep those in mind. 
And then pointers, we're going to be doing pointers a lot. And you just have to remember when passing by pointer, you need to dereference to use the value. Otherwise, you're using the address, and that sucks. Any questions? So asterisk is pointer when it's after the data type. Ampersand after the data type is a pass by reference. And ampersand before the variable, it gives you the address of the variable. And an asterisk before the variable or before the pointer dereferences the pointer. The way I kind of remember this, because this, this is a pain in the ass. Pointers are a pain in the ass. The way I remember point, pointers asterisk is like an arrowhead to me. At the end of a data type, like int star or string star, it says these are arrows or pointers. Then when it's before it, it's before the pointer or before the, it's a variable name, but in here it's a, it's a, before the name, I'll just say name. When it's before the name, it's like the arrow is pointing at a target. So when I see that, that reminds me that this is what's in the box or in the target. It's like it's pointing at the contents of it. I don't know. Uh, we each have our own way of remembering it. It can be a pain in the butt. Is there any questions on that? Okay, what else do we want to take a look at? You go over classes? Uh, yeah. We're going to be doing a, a bunch with classes on Friday. Let me do a, a refresher on vectors first. We will get to classes though. Yeah, that sounds good. Okay, let's see. Template primer. All right. That just let's start with vectors first. those. So what do we have to do to use vectors? We have to include them.
and we get down into main. We make vectors by using triangle brackets. And we say what the data type is inside it. So let's do like a vector of integers. And I'll just call it my vec. OK. So that just is initializing the vector. Uh, it acts like an array in the system. I didn't pre-assign it any values, so it just assigned a bunch of memory to it. It knows integers take up. Uh, we'll take a look at how much room integers take up in a second. But it should be four bytes or 32 bits. Uh, and then how did we add stuff to a vector? If you do my vec dot, it should give you a list of things that you can do with vectors. When you see it, hopefully it rem reminds you of what you're capable of. Uh, pushback is what the way we add shit to it. So I'm going to push back. It's an integer. Let's push back a three. And it, oops. I can push back, I don't know, seven. And I can push back uh, zero. And now, since vectors grow as they're going, we don't have to have a pre-indicated size. If we want to print out the contents, we can do for int i equals zero, i less than my vec dot size. And you have to include a couple parentheses, open and shut the parentheses. And then we'll have i plus plus. And we can say C out my vec. And we're since it acts like an array, we're going to treat it like an A. We got the braces or the brackets, my, C out my vec I. So we populate the vectors by doing pushback. And we treat them like arrays. And it shows our 370. OK, so vectors, this acts like a container for integers. Right? Well, we can have something besides integers. We could have store strings if I do that I need to include string up here come down here and do the my string push back for strings, we use quotation marks. Uh, David is awesome. Oop, my string, period. So is one. Go team SI. And I can do the same thing here. I can just copy this. Uh, we're not using my vec anymore. We're using my str. It's piling. So vectors are containers, and what we put in them can be different.
vectors are like what we're going to start that's kind of new are like templates. Okay. Uh, and let's let's lead into that looking at arrays and why we like vectors over arrays. Uh, so I'm going to comment that stuff out. And let's just start with, uh, I'm going to have an integer. Oops. I don't know. Four seems like enough. Let's do an array of size four. And here we can uh, pre-populate it. Two, four, six, eight. Who do we appreciate? And we can make a little function. Void print array. We want to use camel case. The first uh, word is lowercase. Then we capitalize every letter after that. Uh, we're going to do pointers. Let's see. What do I want to do? Yeah. Let's do int star. Uh, we're passing an arg, and then we're going to pass int size. So when I have it up above, it's like a prototype. And I'll put this right here prototypes. And when we put the actual full code down below, it's called the implementation. You want to be doing this. Some students weren't doing this in CSCI, even though it was repeatedly asked. You want to kind of do this because in, in a real company, you're going to get header files that have the prototypes. And then you're going to get the source files that have these functions. And down here is where we type the code. They're going to be in different files in like a real business. So we do a print array. We're taking in a pointer. Uh, for int, oops, need our parentheses. Equal zero. I less than size. I plus plus. If I want to print out what's in the array, uh, let's see, see out arg i is element i. Let's see what happens when I do this. So I want to pass an array, or, or I want to pass it as a pointer. Print array. The name of the array was a pointer, right? So all I got to do is just pass it. Oh, it takes a size too. And I already declared it. Let's see if that works. Because remember, array, the name of the array is an pointer to the array. So we're telling the print array thing that it needs to take in a pointer. And then we pass the size of it. And when you're dealing with arrays, the pointer for an array gives you the value that's stored. If it's a pointer not to an array, it gives you the address, which is a pain in the ass. This is a little tricky. It's a little confusing on this. Pointers with arrays give you the value stored. Pointers with variables 
give you the address where the value is stored, which seems pretty fucking stupid, but that's the way they made C++. So we can do print array and we'll run it. So two is in element zero of the array, four is in element one of the array, six is in element two of the array, and eight is in element three of the array. Yep, that's exactly how we set it up. Now, if I wanted to come in and make another array, we'll call it uh, array two, make it doubles. We'll call it four in size. Oops, pretty braces. Let's do 2.2, 4.4, 6.6, and 8.8. If I try to print array on array 2, we have a problem. Got the red underline, and it says array 2, the argument of type double is incompatible with the parameter of type integer. So I'm going to comment this out. As is, we can't use the print function for doubles. It sucks. So back in C++ uh, or CSCI2, what we would have done is we would have made a print array two and said pass it a double and then we could do this then i can do print array two and this was called r2 and size and let me throw out a couple end, end lines in there to space it out. Bill errors. What did I? Oh, it said print print array two identifier not found from line thirty seven. So when I called it, it says it doesn't exist, which means I have not declared print array two before that. So it's saying identifier not found. It's telling me I haven't already said what print array two was. I made the implementation but I didn't actually do the prototype. So if you read the, the error messages, they can be pretty handy. You gotta be patient and read them though. It'll tell you the address of where you fucked up. And now we've got both arrays. Okay, but what if I wanted to just make one print function for integers, doubles, floats, maybe characters, strings? Uh, what if we wanted to use classes like a circle or student or something like that? Uh, so this is where, like, this is a pain in the ass. This was flat out a pain in the ass. Print function is a pain. Because we have to declare each time what it is. Declare what the array contains each time. This is where templates come in. 
templates allow us to generalize the data type. This is some sick ass shit. Check this out. So I'm going to comment out my print array stuff. And I'm going to come up here and show you how to do it. We'll comment. I guess I don't need to comment it out. We don't need it. What we start off with is we say template. And then we use, just like vectors, we use the arrow braces or arrow brackets. We say type name T. Okay. Nothing after it. You just leave that alone. No semicolon there. Maybe I'll put that there. Maybe I'll add that in. No semicolon after the template line. And so now if I want an array with it, I can do, let me just copy this up here. That's the one I want. And rather than saying a pointer to an integer array, I'm going to say it's a pointer to a t-type array. So t is my data type. And it's like a variable for the data type. When we do the prototype down below, I'm sorry, the implementation down below. We need to have a template and type name T again. And this should kind of work as is. I'm going to copy that in. I'm going to put it down here. I have parentheses. I know better. That's brackets or curly braces. And the reason why we don't have an asterisk or a semicolon after it is we could do this as one line. I could have it as one line, but that makes it a fucking pain in the ass to read. So what we do is we put it over two lines. That way, just like every other function, we can see what's returned right away. We see the name of the function, and we're not having to skim the line looking for it. So now I can come up here, and with my print array, I can do print array r size. This did our integer one. And then I can do, maybe I'll throw in, in some end else. And now I can do, without changing the name, I can add the second array, the double array. I is not found. Why? Damn it. Uh, where is the air log? Doesn't have a for loop. I didn't have a for loop. Oh, shit, you're right. Good catch. I just copied part of it like a moron. That champion move right there. Thanks, Judith. And now look, we got the same print function doing both integers and doubles. 
That's fucking super sweet. That is super awesome. So, like, if we wanted to make one of strings... We already got string in there. Let's make a string. String array three, size four. Uh, oh, I know. Let's just use the names of the students I see in class. Oh, Jimsy's got his name capitalized. We'll use that. And then we've got one RSI. And then we got Judith. And then we've got Kenny. Oh. There we go. And now I will copy this. And I'll just say pass it print array three. Isn't that super cool? Remember how frustrated you were when you were first learning this crap with arrays and you had to do different print function for each one and you're like, this is annoying. Well, we held off the good stuff for CSCI too. So what we're gonna do is do, do template and then type name is, because what we're doing is like, what is gonna be the, the name of the data type? So convention is to use a capital T. If you need more, use more capital letters. Like U, V, W. And I will put that up here. So it's there. Uh, then, Notice that I coded up the array first without it. Like your best approach is make the function without it and then look through it and go, what can I templatize? What can I make a template for? I didn't, the size is always going to be an integer for on an array. So there was no need to templatize the integer part on size. I left that alone. So you don't need to templatize everything, templatize what you need. If you had started up here, you might have got a little carried away and did T star and then T size, and it, it wouldn't have worked. Well, it would have worked, but it didn't need to work. You didn't need to do that. Like we could have had a U size there. Uh, we'll we'll show doing more. Uh, it's already eight forty. Uh, we'll do we'll do the templates on uh, the bigger fish like classes. We'll cover classes. We'll, we'll do a refresher on classes on Friday. We will templatize the classes and make it so that like everything is super awesome. Uh, just as just this is to get wet your whistle and see you. Let you see what templates look like now. So we use capital names for this. Uh, other shit we use capitals for. We also use capitals. Letter for the start of a class name. Like circle, student, etc. And we reserve lowercase characters for variables. Okay. I'm gonna go put this in the uh, announcements. The other stuff is what we had down below. 
here. We did a little bit of our own thing. Uh, come on, scroll, 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 scroll. All right, copy. Come over to announcements. First lectures code. At least the second half. First half was from the other primer. Let's see how that ends up looking. Oh, it's got no fucking spaces in there. Look at that. Ugh. Oh, God, that looks terrible. I'll have to find another better way to post this later because that does look absolutely terrible. Because uh, I know I have a different in the modules. Other than that, that's it for tonight. All right. Thank you. Any questions? Thanks for showing up, guys. This makes it a lot better to have 